now you'll see how easily we're going to make it so, and this is how the studio looks when it's really user friendly and anyone can use it and for which we collaborated with facebook i'll show you how to make a 2d effect and a 3d effect using the studio and you can see how the effect or the filter that you are creating is looking on your face I'll just share my screen and I'll show you from where you can download the studio how you can use it and what are the basics of the studio so I'll just present my screen uh, just give me a moment sure. and uh, others who want to connect with Tanisha on LinkedIn I've dropped the link to her profile in the chat box you can yeah. use that to connect with her and uh, for the roadmap thing this uh, AI technology is also like blockchain so you don't really have a roadmap right now so we'll just have to create one by ourselves in the near future absolutely absolutely we don't have any particular roadmap as of now but i'm sure something or the other will come up in the future yeah. i think people like us are only want to do it who are interested in this field so i'll just share my screen and i'll show you so the spark ear studio in which we're going to work you just have to download this studio just type spark ar studio and click on this link this studio is made by facebook made and managed by facebook and it is a very user friendly software and now you will see how easily we're going to make it so just click on download and within like 2 uh, or 3 minutes depending upon your internet speed this application will be downloaded and i have already downloaded it so i'm not downloading it again i'll just open it in my laptop and we'll see so this is the icon of spark ar studio we'll just open it and we'll just get a better look of it so uh, i think i need to switch off my camera to make this thing working uh, yeah i think it is available for uh, let me just i think it is available for like So I'll just I think I have to switch off my camera to access it. So if you have any doubts, you can stop me in the middle of the workshop or after the workshop. Of course, we're going to have a Q and A session. So this is how the Spark AR Studio looks when you download it and you try to run it. At first, you might feel like it's a really cool app, uh, and it's just like Instagram or Facebook. You can just put on filters on your head or on your face, but that's not how it is. You can actually make one filter or one augmented reality effect from the scratch and add anything and everything that you wish to include in it so when you just getting started with this spark ar studio always start with a new project we have really cool templates here like the hair color elements the world object face mask these are objects of course you can use but then you won't get the experience of creating something from scratch Of course you can blend these effects together also to create something really cool but always start with a new project when you are beginning to use a new software or something like that so i'll just click on new project and maybe later and this is how the studio looks when you open it so you might get a little overwhelmed at first on looking at the studio it's really user friendly and anyone can use it i'm telling you at about the initiative that i was telling you about for which we collaborated with facebook using this software only 15000 people from across the world created their ar ar effects and we also rewarded them with t-shirts and goodies from our site and we literally there was a wave on instagram for people had created the effect on one particular topic that was to celebrate getting vaccinated and it was all over the instagram people were literally creating it every day and they were getting rewarded for it there was nothing they had to pay it was an amazing opportunity for people to connect with this technology so i'll just give you a brief introduction about the studio and how all these options here work and then i'll show you how to make a 2d effect and a 3d effect using the studio so first of all this gentleman here the screen that is appearing to you is actually the real time face stimulation what is it you can see it's written iphone 8 so basically it is a preview of how your effect 
or the filter that you're creating will look when you use it on your phone. So this is just a preview window. You're not going to work in this window. We're going to work in this panel here. You can of course change it. We have, uh, if you want to change it from iOS to Android, just change it according to what phone you have. It won't make much of a difference because it's just a preview panel. And this is the main panel which we'll work and we'll add objects that we want to. So you can see there's a screen like this, but it is a little bit tilted and the view is not very clear. So while working in the Spark Air Studio, there are certain set of rules that we follow. For example, I'm trying to move the screen and align it properly, but this is not happening. I can't simply move it using my cursor. This can't happen. So the set of rules that we use here for rotating this particular screen is Control plus Alt for zooming in the screen. Only Control for rotating and setting the alignment of the screen. So it's Control and Alt for zooming in and out. Control for rotating it. And if we want to set it right or left, we just use this Alt panel. Alt and move it left to right. So these are certain things that we have to keep in mind while using the studio. Nothing very fancy, just some shortcuts that we use in Photoshop and other apps. It's very simple. Control and Alt for zooming in and out, Control for rotating it and Alt for moving it left to right. That's it. And now we're going to see what are the panels available for us to use, how we can publish our effect on Instagram, what we can use. So basically, first of all, if you want to change this real-time stimulation, you just have to go on this option here, video. Click on video and you'll have an option to change the real-time stimulation. You can change it to this, this, whatever suits you. And if none of this suits you, what you can do is, you can just click on integrated webcam and you can your laptop zip cam will open and you can see how the effect or the filter that you are creating is looking on your face. So by clicking on integrated webcam, your own face appears here rather than these face stimulations and you can work on your own face and see how what you are creating will look when you actually use it on social media. So this is how we're going to do it. Let's just keep it to what it was for now. And you can also pause the real-time stimulation if you want to. And why this stimulation is moving left to right is because uh, you might have seen on Snapchat also when you have, uh, suppose, a particular, uh, there's an effect with a particular hat over your head. So if you move your face left to right, the hat also aligns with it. It's not like that if you move your face to right, the hat will still be in the center. So this is why this real-time face stimulation is moving. And that's why we have this option to pause it. So I'll just pause it because we'll be adding certain objects to it and make our effect look real and make it come to life. So we have three main panels while we work in the Spark AR Studio. The first panel is this panel, the scene panel. Now in the scene panel, we have options like camera, focal distance, ambient light, directional light. This is the panel where all the things you add in your objects get aligned in a very well-defined manner. For example, you've added a face tracker or a face mesh. What are these things we'll see in a few minutes? So those things will appear in the scene panel. They won't align anywhere randomly in the studio. They will come under the scene panel in a very well-defined manner. Now, when I say well-defined manner, uh, we'll see what I was talk what I'm talking about. I'll tell you what basically I was trying to, you know, uh, convey by that. So we have options here, lighting and everything. These options we're going to use later on when we try to make some complex effect. But for beginners who are just you getting started with the studio. We're going to work in a very simple and very basic manner so that each and every one understands what we're trying to do here. So the next panel right below the scene panel is the assets panel. So assets panel is a panel from where you can add objects from your computer 
just click here from your computer or from the AR library. Now what the AR library is, let's see what it is. I'll just click on AR library and a bunch of cool stuff has come here. We have shaders, we have animations, we have objects. So AR library is an inbuilt library in the AR studio by which you can add animations, 3D objects, sound and music, anything and everything that you want to add to your filter or your effect to make it look attractive. Uh, suppose if you want to add a hat, just click hat here, enter and every 3D hat or 2D hat that is available for use will be displayed here and you can choose it you don't have to make any in-app purchases this is all available for free we're going to use uh, some of the assets from this AR library in our effect that we make so this is the AR library uh, you can uh, you can uh, you know import uh, 3d effects sounds and music files anything from this library you don't have to go externally to any other browser of course you can do that as well but when something is inbuilt and it is ready to use, why not just simply use it? So, these were the two panels on the left hand side, the scene panel and the assets panel. Now on the right hand side, we have our master panel, which is also known as the inspector panel. Now in the inspector panel, why is it called the master panel? It's because everything that we add to our effect can be controlled by this particular panel suppose i have added a text and i want to you know uh, change the alignment or the size of the text it can not be done by the scene panel it can only be done by accessing the inspector panel uh, we have options here position scale rotation there will be many other options that will come once we add some objects to it we can control anything that we add to our uh, effect by this inspector panel and therefore it is called as the inspector panel or the master panel. So this was the introduction of the studio. It's very easy to use. You can see there's no coding or anything required. Anyone can use it. And the option that we have here, publish, it basically enables us to publish the effect that we are making on Instagram and use it and share it with our friends and family. So we're also going to do that and we'll have a look how you can make your own effect and submit it on Instagram. But first, let's get started. So first, I will tell you how you can make a very easy 2D effect, how you can add something from your computer, how you can add a text, how you can align it, how you can change its color, font, everything. And then we'll see how we can add a 3D object and how we can align it with our face. So first of all, for adding the 2D object, we'll click on this add object option. And from this add object option, we add a face tracker. Now, as the name suggests, a face tracker, I'll just unpause the video and let's see what the face tracker is doing. So this face tracker, nothing has changed in the preview panel. But something has been added in this panel in which we, uh, the scene panel in which we were working. So you can see three axes have appeared and they are aligning with the movement of our face. Our real time face stimulation is moving up and down, left and right. So is the face tracker thing moving. So as its name suggests, it's tracking the movement of our face. And any objects that now we're going to add, we'll add it to the face tracker so that it also aligns with our movement. So this is what I was telling you that uh, in the scene panel objects are added in a well-defined manner. This was what I was talking about. First we'll add a face tracker, then we'll add some objects that we want to add. So these are some things that we need to keep in mind. Very small things, not something very typical or something very tough. Very small things need to be taken care of while working in the studio. So now I have added a face tracker, I'll just pause it. And now I'll, I want to add a sticker and I want to make an effect for my Instagram uh, where it says that I got vaccinated. Uh, we have seen a lot of effects like this lately on Instagram. We can also make our own. So let's try and let's see how we can actually do that. 
so i want to simply put a sticker here in the top right corner of my preview panel which says i got vaccinated and i want to align it with my uh, face tracker face movement but uh, how we're going to do that uh, we are doing exactly that right now we have added a face tracker now let's click on add object and uh, now let's click right click on the face tracker let's add an object so we have uh, many options here we have face tracker plane tracker target tracker null objects and everything like that but for the particular effect that we're making we need to add a plane a plane and not a plane tracker plane tracker is something else so when we add a plane we see a checkered pattern thing has appeared and it has taken over our face simulation's face and this was not even really what we were trying to do how are we going to align it so as you can see we've added a plane just below the face tracker and if i unpause it you can see now the plane is also tracking the movement of our face and it is also we left in right with a face tracker so this is what we actually wanted to do we've created a plane for the sticker that we're going to add and we're going to paste that sticker over this plane but for that we need to align it properly in the position that we're trying to and we need to get rid of this checkered pattern so everything that you add any 3d object that you first add to spark ar studio will appear in this checkered manner this is a format that the spark ar studio follows it's very easy to you know uh, get rid of this checkered pattern but this is how you get started with it so now you can see when we've clicked on plane the inspector panel has gotten activated and now we have options to control it we have options to control its position scale rotation add some materials what are the materials i'm going to tell you so since we've added a plane and it's a 3d object we have three axes to control it simple axis the red one is x axis green one is y axis and blue one is the z axis so now i want to align it and as i told you i want to put a sticker on the top right corner of my face of my panel what i can do is i can just use this three axis available to me to align it properly so with the y axis i'll just push it a little to the top you can see with the y axis i'm able to push it to the top and we are working in the in the scene panel but the alignment that we need to set is decided by the preview panel so do we want our plane or the sticker that we're trying to add here no we want a little on the right top corner so we we will use the x axis to move left and right now we'll just click on x axis and very easily and very swiftly we'll just move it to the left to the top corner So you can see I have arranged it very nicely and very easily. And let's see what we can do with the Z axis. The Z axis is obviously for bringing the effect a little to the front. So if I try to bring it to the little to the front, I can use X axis a little to the back again, pushing it inwards towards the screen. And this is not the only way through which you can, you know, align this. If you're not feeling comfortable using the uh, three axes, and one more thing, if you are uh, working in the Spark AR Studio and if you have a mouse by chance at home with you, uh, I would suggest you connect a mouse with your uh, laptop to begin with, because sometimes you know with the touchpad of the laptop it gets a little tricky to handle when you are using it for the first time. I am currently using my touchpad of the laptop. Because now I have gotten used to it, but when first I used to work with the Spark AR Studio, I used to connect my mouse because it was easier to handle that way. So if you don't want, uh, if you have a mouse, uh, you can connect that. If not, uh, uh, just you can work with your touchpad also. So we have uh, these buttons here. Let's see what we can do with these buttons. So uh, this one says adjust the position of the selected object. So what is our selected option? we can see this blue line here indicates that our selected object is the plane and now i want to adjust its position so i can use this option here to adjust its position
correct and what if i want to rotate it just right to the adjust position option we have an option to rotate the selected object i'll just click on rotate and let's see what happens so we have this panel through which we can rotate it so let's see let's try to experiment a little bit so you can see now we are rotating it 90 degree and just have a look at the inspector panel as i am changing the rotation here something in the inspector panel is getting changed have a look at the rotation of the x axis it is getting changed because i am working with the x uh, with the x axis and rotating it about it so this is again a way through which we can you know change the way uh, we are working if we are not uh, uh, comfortable with working with the axis or with these options here you can simply head to the inspector panel and you can manually type in the values that you are looking at for example uh, let me just type rotation in the rotation section let me just type 90 degree and let's see what happens now you can see x axis has rotated to 90 degree it was already rotated to some angle when we were trying to uh, align it experiment with the rotation option so simply let's set it back to zero so you can see this is what we're trying to do we have many options to control one single panel suppose the scale uh, the scale basically indicates the size of the object now if i want to ch change the size to let's i just want to make it a little larger i'll just type in 1.5 and see what happens so you can see i changed the value on the x axis the value uh, the plane automatically increased its size on the x axis so by default or uh, the scale is always set to 111 and the rotation is always set to 000 position is also 000 by default when you add some objects and in case uh, if you are trying to you know add something and align the position but you get you know overwhelmed in the middle and you don't uh, get it what to do next just simply set the scale to 111 from the inspector panel rotation and position to 000 then the object that you have selected will be placed at the dead center of the screen and you can start realigning it so that happened a lot with me when i was a beginner and i was getting to use the studio i used to get confused a lot so uh, you just set everything to 000 on position and rotation and 111 on scale that's how you can work with it and to control the scale also we have an option here with this we can control it scale so you can see for controlling the position scale and rotation we have two options one from here or uh, one from here three options one from here one from directly from the panel and then we have a master panel inspector panel so now you can see we have positioned the plane where we want our sticker to come and uh, we're going to just paste the sticker now to it but first we we'll have to get rid of this checkered pattern that is on our screen currently so for that what we're going to do is we're going to add a material to it now what a material is so a material as you can see is appearing in the inspector panel we can add a material from here or we can add a material from here but what basically is this material so uh, you can consider the material as a gift wrapping of a particular gift so material basically enables us to change the appearance of the object that we have added for example in this particular uh, plane we want to change the way by uh, we want to change the way it's looking we want to get rid of this checkered pattern and make it to something neutral so that is what we can do we can't simply click on plane and try to change its appearance we don't have that option here we will add a material here i'll just click on material and let's see what we have so you can see suddenly the checkered pattern has gone and in the assets panel a material has been added but it's still not the sticker that we want but this is what we have done we've added a material we've got rid of the checkered pattern and we've uh, and something has been added in the assets panel so it is always uh, you know advised to rename the material or texture that you are adding for example i'll just name it as plain material 
why am i saying so because material is one thing that is common to every object that you add in the studio it can be a 3d object it can be it can simply be a 2d object it can be uh, anything it can be a text also so anything that you want to add a material is common for everything and you're going to add a lot of material we are making a very basic effect that's why we'll uh, probably add one or two material but when you make Uh, you know effects that are a little complex in nature that have uh, many 3d objects that is confetti lace and all of that so that way you end up adding a lot of material and to avoid any confusion it's always good to simultaneously rename the material so i have uh, written it as plain material and let's see now what next we can do So now everything is set. We just need to add the sticker that we want to add from the very beginning. For that, I'll just go to texture. So the flow of the studio is always like this. Select the object that you want to work with. Head to the inspector panel and make changes. Scene or assets panel, then to the inspector panel. Now we're just gonna choose texture. Now <laughs> what a texture is. So basically, we want to add a sticker, and that will act as a texture over the material of the plane. So we have options here. We can select texture from within the studio, or we can choose a file. Now, choose a file. I have already downloaded a simple PNG sticker from the internet that says I am Axiate. I am going to choose that. Uh, I am going to choose that. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the sticker that says Stay Home. So you can see the inspect now. I've changed the texture. I've chosen that particular file, and now that effect, or the uh, the material effect, or the checkered effect, everything is gone. And we have the simple sticker that says "Stay Home." And let's see if it is aligning with our face movement or not. So yes, it is aligning with our face movement. As our face is moving left to right, it is also moving left to right. Let's try to you know make it uh, a little larger. So I'll just click on plane. You you don't click on texture for changing its size or anything. We click on plane because that is the one that we've added everything on. So let's just make it to a one point two. And use the inspector panel only when you want to make micro changes. Otherwise, it's always good to just stick with. the axis is is that where you have a better handling of the axis also and uh and you know it's it gets uh, you you will get used to uh, making these changes when you're using the panels uh if you just start using the inspector panel that's also fine you can do that but just to set your hand on on uh, you know the spark here so it's always good to you if you experiment with this particular thing with the axis or with these option here so now you can see we have added it and the sticker is aligned with the with our movement face movement so if i say still the uh, the particular sticker that we have added it will also stay still if i move my hand left to right it will move left to right that is how the spark ar studio works This is one of the simplest effects that anyone can make or anyone can get started with to make. So, uh this was what our initiative with Facebook was also. We basically wanted everyone to use the studio to uh, try their hands on AR technology and we ended up doing that. Of course, there's a wide range of, uh, you know, capabilities in the studio that you can use. We'll see some of them now. So, uh now What if uh, you want to add a text to it or something like that? So for that, if you want to add a text to it, you can just simply click on Add, add a two D object or three D object. So we have two options for text. If you want to add three D text, you can add three D text. If you want to add two D text, you can add two D text. Uh, but what I plan to do is, I plan to add a rectangular uh, canvas here first, a little, uh, a little transparent, that gives it a glossy effect, and then over it write something. So I'll just add a two D object, and I'll add a rectangle. So a rectangle has been added, and you can see in the scene panel 
we added a rectangle it automatically came under the canvas so that is the hierarchy that the spark ai studio follows it, it makes us very easy to use because if objects uh, randomly start you know aligning here and there it will get very tough to align it so uh, this is something that the spark ai studio has made really easy for us the alignment and now this uh, again a checkered pattern has come but this time something is different from the plane if you click on the plane we have certain axes for it and we have options here and in the inspector panel that are slightly different for this rectangle why is so why is it so because the plane that we added was a 3d object and the rectangle that we have added is a 2d object so for a 2d object you don't need to specifically work with the axis you can simply drag it up and down and place it wherever you want it in the pre preview panel you can have a look of where you're placing it and i just want to place it here and even the length width and everything of the 2d objects can be controlled directly from here so i'll just increase its length to this so you can see everything is being done in a very easy way when we are working with 2d objects so it was not very tough to work with the 3d objects as well but it's even easier for the 2d objects so now what we're going to do is again the same thing we want to change its color we want to get rid of this checkered pattern we'll just click on materials and we'll create a new material so a new material has been added in the assets panel and this was why i was telling you to simultaneously and rename the material whatever material we are adding it we need to simultaneously rename it so i'll just rename it as a rectangular material because we have already have a plain material and by default any material when you add it to the studio it's gray in color you have to change the color of it uh, according to your choice we have a wide range of colors here to choose from i'll just click on color and select something that aligns with the theme oh uh, let's go for red oh uh, red yeah and see and if you have a particular code of a color in your mind you can just put the code here in html part and go for it uh, because every color has a particular code if you are particular that way that you want that uh, particular color just go ahead and put that code here it will automatically appear in the studio and you will be able to use it otherwise we have a wide range of colors available in the studio as well just pick whatever you want to and we can see a red band a red color has been added to our material that we were trying to add but it's uh, something it's not very appealing i just want to change its transparency i just want to make it a little more transparent so for that i'll just uh, from the inspector panel i'll just scroll down and this particular option to select how opaque it will be or how transparent it will be i'll just set this slider a little down yeah so i have selected the uh, opaque level or the opacity of this particular canvas that we have added to 42% to make it look better and to not give it a very bright look uh, there are many options here the offset option render blend mode all these options are options that you will start using once you have uh, completed that uh, part of where you just started working with the studio so these are the objects that we use a little later at the stage when you have some experience with using the studio at present no need to indulge in what is the blend mode the color mode and everything about that we just go stick to simple ends that we don't get confused so all the shader type is something that will work so this is how we have added this rectangle to our effect and this is how we change the color of it now i just want to add a text to it and then i'll show you how you can actually use it on your instagram or your facebook so since spark ai studio is a, a, a software by facebook therefore the effects that you make on this studio are only available for use on instagram and facebook so of course you can share the link with your family and friends on whatever platform you want to 
on WhatsApp, Telegram, you can send them the link. That is the effect that I've made. But you can only use it on Facebook and Instagram uh, because the Spark Air Studio is from Facebook. If you want to create something for Snapchat, there's an app called Snap Art. It's also very similar to the Spark Air Studio. You can use that. That will only work on Snapchat. But I think nowadays, oh, Instagram is the new social media. We all use it, and it's the wide, most widely used uh, social media platform. So I think Instagram is the best thing to get started with. Uh, if you're making for any other platform like Snapchat, use Snap Art. But Snap Art is also very easy to use, uh, but it is a little, a little uh, complicated uh, because it's an app. It's in software. It's still in. Uh, It's testing phase. Spark AI Studio is uh, properly built, uh, though there are certain updates, regular updates on Spark AI Studio as well. But it's uh, but Snap Art is a little tough to use, but the basic concept remains same on there also. So to add the text, I'll just click on Add, and let's see. Uh, let's try to add a 2D text or a 3D text. Let's try to add a 3D text. this time and see what happens so again the axis have appeared for the 3d text because it's a 3d text axis have come we need to align it we can simply do it by our x axis by y axis and if we want to change the scale we can just select the scale from here we can just select the scale from here you can see we are able to change the scale from here or we can also select the scale from here So now you can see, I want to make a very micro change in my text. And that's why I'm heading to the inspector panel. You can see the scale of the text is already very small. It's zero point zero zero one three eight something like that, and I want to increase it just a little bit. So I'm making micro change for that. I'll just use the inspector panel and set it to one zero point zero zero one zero five zero. Similarly on the y-axis, similar way on the z-axis, zero point zero zero one five zero. So you can see we have set the alignment and the scale of our three tiles. We just need to you know change its color and everything. So similarly. We're gonna change the color the same way that we did for the rectangular panel. Now, for the text, we already have a material that is created in the assets panel. The material zero. It is the text material, so I'll just name it text material. So sometimes this happens uh, for some objects. The material automatically comes in the assets panel. That is something you need to keep in mind. Or usually we add it for the text. It has come uh, automatically. For the uh, for the rectangular material or for the plain material, we had to add it. So I'll just click on material and I'll try to change the color of it again in the similar way. Let's stick to a black this time. Let's see. Yeah. So I've changed the color and now I'll just type in something. We added a text. So three D text is here. So by the coming to the inspector panel, you can change the text that you want to add. So one more thing, when you are making effects on the Spark AR Studio, there are certain set of guidelines that you need to follow. And by guidelines, I mean uh, usually when you submit uh, this effect or filter that you are making on the Spark AR Studio, and you want to use it on Instagram, what you're going to do is you're going to publish it by this button. I'll show you how you can do that as well, and and how you can actually use it on Instagram. But for that, Instagram has to first uh, re- Instagram will first review your effect, what you have made, and within one or two days it will get accepted. Now, how will it get accepted, or how are these things going to work? So uh, these are certain there are certain guidelines that Instagram follows. For example, uh, there are certain things that are not accepted in the effect. Uh, a hashtag. So you can't add hashtags in these effects. Uh, I don't know the particular reason, but uh, if you add some hashtags or something like that, I was also not aware about it earlier. I did that and it got rejected. So hashtags are not allowed. 
don't include that you can obviously add hashtags when you upload a story on instagram by adding text that you can do but don't add hashtags in these effects or uh, in the text section it will eventually lead to rejection of your effect so there are certain guidelines like that instagram follows nothing very typical it's not like that if you add some music or something like that they will reject it nothing like that happens in some cases that happens uh, you can just put a request uh, i'll show you how you can do all of that so the text that i want to add uh, let's just uh, add stay safe stay safe and yeah this is how i've added it okay stay safe mhm again stay safe yeah so i'm just making this uh, particular this effect on the particular theme of covid you can actually make on anything and everything you can make uh, nowadays one effect on instagram is really popular or uh, last year also it was really popular that you know people have missed their whole convocation because of covid so for the virtual convocation you just you know tap on the screen and a hat appear on your head a convocation hat hat appear on your head and confetti uh, confetti glitters appear in the background so that is one effect that i had also created that you can also create and it was really popular on instagram especially last year at the peak of the pandemic i have aligned my uh, uh, effect with this particular theme of staying home and staying safe so let's see what happens now yeah so we have added the face tracker we have added the plane we have added the text we have basically created a very basic a beginner level ar effect that we can use on social media and share it with our friends and family now i'll just quickly show you how you can actually upload it on instagram for using it so uh, we have two options for using these effects uh, so let me just quickly show you how you can add something from the ar studio ar library also as well i just forgot that so i told you the ar library is an inbuilt app i want to align something with the theme of my uh, covid related something so i'll just type doctor and i'll see what we have in store for us so you can see we have these options here the doctor there are several options here you can also you know i'll just stick to this one just click on import free all these are available for free you don't have to make any in app purchases and something like downloading will come and when it's done it means that this uh, this particular uh, dr mario which i'm trying to add has been imported to the studio at this particular moment you might be redirected to log into your facebook account because this whole studio is from facebook eventually uh, when you download the studio now so you will be asked to log into your facebook account so at this stage you might get redirected to log into your facebook account or you might not if you have not if you have logged out of your facebook account from your laptop then you will need to uh, upload log into it again i have currently logged into my facebook account that's why it's not redirecting me to there i'm just adding it and we can see that the dr mario has appeared in the asset section but it is nowhere to be seen in our panel so where has it gone so this is an issue which a lot of people face when we when to try to you know align it or, or something like that and yeah so this is an issue which a lot of people face when they try to upload you know uh, their effect or anything like that uh, and suddenly our sticker has disappeared so these things happen so something like these happen don't get scared about it we'll just get the sticker back so let's delete this and see if the sticker comes back okay so i think yeah the sticker has gone okay so there's a update going on in the studio right now the spark ar studio that's why something like this has happened but not an issue But the sticker will eventually come back in a minute or two and i'll just get the dr mario back so 
now the Dr. Mario is nowhere to be seen between uh, our panel. It's nowhere uh, and we don't know where it has gone. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this Dr. Mario and place it between the focal distance and the ambient light. We do this for everything that we add to our studio. Any studio, any object can 3D object or 2D object. Whenever you import something from the studio, this step has to be followed because now you can see the Dr. Mario has appeared, but it is very huge. And uh, at this point, you might get confused on what to do next, but it's very simple. Don't do anything. Simply head to the inspector panel. The scale is set to 111. Just make it a little small. Let's see 0 0.05 on all the axes. So it won't make it won't take much of a time to bring it to a particular size. Yeah. So now you can see the this animation that we tried to add is of a particular size and it's not gigantic like it was earlier. So I'll just place it somewhere here and yeah this was what I was trying to do and I eventually did it I was trying to import some material from the AR studio and I was trying to show you guys how you can align it with your face material and you can obviously when you click on this Dr. Mario you can see a number of materials have come in so what are these materials you can see there are a lot of colors in this Mario it's white gray blue each and every color is included. So if you are particular about, uh, suppose you want to change the color of the coat that the, this particular Dr. Mario is wearing, you can select the material for the coat and change it. So this is the flexibility level of things that you are importing from this Park Air, from this Park Air library. So I think in the interest of time, I've taken a lot of your time already. We just I'm just going to show you how to publish the effect and how you can use it for actually on your social media. So I'll just click on publish and you don't need to externally go to any source and publish it. You can just type in from here. So uh, what do you want to do? Publish a new effect or update an existing effect? Of course, when you have submitted a particular effect on Instagram or Facebook, you need to, uh, you can also update it after one or two days. Uh, there's no limit to after how many days you can change it, but you can change it if you want to change it or update it. But since we are publishing it for the first time, I'll just click on publish new effect. And there's an option to upload a demo video. Now a demo video is nothing but a video of you actually using your effect. So that that is something that can be done. And you can do that as well. Uh, but you know, it's optional. You are eventually going to use the effect that you're creating on your social media profile. So it's optional, you can skip it if you want to, you can record it. And platform requirements. Platform requirements are the requirements that have to be met in order to successfully publish your effect. So there are basically two effects, two requirements that needs to be fulfilled. One is the size requirement. The file has to be less than 30 MB. So suppose you have, uh, the this particular effect that we have made it is a very simple and a very basic effect. So the file size requirement is easily met. But when you make effects that are really you know complex that have a lot of material and everything like that, uh, then the file size sometimes exceeds the prescribed limit. In that case, what you can do is first the studio itself tries to compress your uh, effect. So the, uh, an option will come here. It will automatically compress the, your effect file. It can be, you know, uh, it can be, uh, it can take up to one or two minutes. Not like it will take 20, 30 minutes. It will easily compress it within one or two minutes. And if, uh, and usually 99% cases, that's done here only. But if that's not done, you can just simply go to any uh, file size reducer and reduce the size there. Capability is met is something uh, that we have to keep in mind. Now, like I told you, there are certain things that are not accepted in the effect. Capability is met is just that uh, option. So, um, not the text, but uh, suppose you've added something like, uh, say, a QR code. 
all these things are not accepted so uh, don't add those things they will eventually lead to rejection of your effect so don't add qr code or something like that otherwise you are free to be as creative as you can you can add anything and everything you can take anything from the uh, internet download it any 3d or 2d object that you want to add any kind of animation any kind of video audio but only certain things like i gave an example of qr code these things are not allowed so don't add those and just click on upload so we'll be redirected to the spark ar hub automatically we don't need to separately open spark ar hub in our browser in like within uh, 30 40 seconds we'll be uh, there and you can see this is the final page through which we'll submit our effect now we have an option to give our uh, the effect or the filter that we've created a name so the name can be anything uh, i have actually ended up submitting a lot of effects on this particular covid theme because we were working with facebook on that particular initiative so i'll just give it a stay home stay home effect okay as simple as that you can the file is already been uploaded here you can see you don't need to upload it again now you can control the platforms and select the particular platforms on which you want to upload it so as i told you spark ai studio is a studio by facebook that's why we can exclusively use these effects that we are curating on facebook and instagram only we have option here to select both the platform or one so right now only the facebook option is available to me because i have not linked my instagram account here uh, i can do that by simply clicking link account but i don't want to do it right now in the interest of time so i'll just publish it on facebook and so now this next step is really important audience so you're creating an effect that is that will be available to everyone who is using instagram but if you don't want that way or if you're just making an effect for you know experimenting purpose you want to keep to yourself you or uh, or it's the way your personality works your private person you can just click on link only so when you click on link only only people with the link of your effect will be able to or have access to using your effect for example if you are using the link only option and you use your effect and upload it on your story so then everyone uh, on your account will be able to use it but if you don't share the link of the effect anywhere it will be available to you only and it instagram won't display it to the public and if you keeping it public it will be available to everyone on instagram for use and even if you have a a private profile and you choose the public option then also it will be available to everyone for use so i'll just keep it link only for now because i have not created something very nice i was just showing you how guys how to use the basics of the studio so i can option again here is option i can basically photo of you using your uh, effect it's optional again so just click on publish and let's see will the effect get accepted or not i mean in 99.9% cases it gets uh, accepted within a minute or so but sometimes it is under review and it gets reviewed by instagram so that's not something to worry about uh, so this point has come you have published your effect view link and i had selected the link only option so i'll just copy this link done even if you select public option you will have an option to select your own link so i'll go on home and uh, i'll see here or oh, you can see i have submitted a bunch of effects so stay home this particular effect that i has created has been uh, accepted but since it was link only it was not available to any public and so the impression zero so this is how we created the effect on you know spark ai studio and now i'll stop presenting the screen if any one of you has any doubt how about the ai technology or any step that you want me to repeat i'll do that and we can wrap up the session i've taken a lot of your time and this was what i wanted to share with you all spark ai studio is one studio that is the most user friendly studio in the augmented reality technology available to us you have seen we don't need to use any coding or any such technologies there are certain apps that require us to code particular effects 
Spark AI Studio is not one of them. And uh, there are certain other apps like Snap Art that I mentioned is particularly for Snapchat. Uh, now we have uh, Blipper. Blipper is also fine. Uh, it's a little complex. But if you're getting started with it, now I have actually started using a lot of software. But the very first software that I used was also Spark AI Studio. My basics got cleared from here only. So if some of you are trying to make any effects or if you're trying to create something like that, you can, you know, uh, definitely uh, just uh, work with Spark AI Studio and. I'm just having a look at the chat box. If any one of you has any doubt, you can just unmute yourself. You can ask it, or you can just, you know, put it in the chat box. And uh, you don't need to have a very powerful computer to use it. Uh, yeah, if you have a graphics card, then it will definitely, you know, be a plus point. The Spark AI Studio will not lag, or any other studio for that matter. It won't lag, but even if you don't have a graphics card, you can simply use it. It's not much of a task to do it so i hope you guys like the session if you have any doubts please ask me i'll be really happy to address it also uh, now that all of you know how to create these effects we would like you to you know create some of your own effects publish them and in the community itself we have you know show your work channel and we'll also be creating a separate channel for ar as well so you guys can interact with other people who are learning and you can just start learning Spark AI Studio together in the community itself. So yeah. create your effects and send the links in the Show Your Work channel. Yeah, so that's the way how community works. You guys can connect with each other. You guys can connect with me. You guys can connect with people who are doing some great job in AR. And if you connect with me and link me on LinkedIn, I'll be happy to you know interact with you all and take this forward. So uh, thank you, thank you. I'm getting a lot of comments so uh, i think we can end the session now or is there any doubt that you want me to address or any query that concerns you anyone if you have any doubts feel yeah. free to ask you can write in the chat box you can unmute yourselves also uh, the session will be available later on we'll be sending the link as well so you can if you miss some point or you know you had any issues you'll be able to easily understand what's going on yeah uh, I have a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, please uh, go ahead. My doubt is regarding as you had shown us through the Spark AR Studio. Uh, there is only one feature of uh, just tracking the face or there is something like, uh, as we have seen, there are lots of effects in which we use to take out our tongue and that looks like yeah. a dog's tongue and all that. Yeah, so Can all we work of... with that? Yeah, absolutely. So all of these effects are available on Spark AR Studio. You can combine effects. You can make a very complex effect. Like I have made a lot of effects using that. So I actually uh, taught you guys a very beginner level use of Spark AR Studio so that you don't get confused. But of course, you can do that. Body tracking, arm tracking, target tracking. The particular thing that you mentioned is done using the target tracking option. So that is how you can work with that. Every option is available on Spark AI Studio. 99% effects that we see on Instagram and that we see on uh, any other platform apart from Snapchat are made on Spark AI Studio itself. I hope I have addressed your query. Yes. Hello. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. What is your review about Google? Uh, Google Augmented Reality Library or Google uh, AR Toolkit something. Yeah, yeah, the Google AR Toolkit. So, yeah, yeah. so the Google AR Toolkit, I have uh, started using it like a few months back. Uh, it's a really nice initiative by Google, but it's a software that is still in beta testing phase. It's not completely ready for developers to use. It has several bugs. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, telling you the disadvantages of it. But as a beginner, if you're trying to learn it, don't uh, indulge with that particular software because it has a lot of bugs, and you will end up uh, wasting some time. Basically, uh, they are actually working on it. They they are working on it. We they are trying to make the technology a little bit better. 
and uh, within a few months i think it will be ready to use for developers and for users then you can definitely try using it but at this particular stage don't indulge with that particular software it will create confusion okay thank you Welcome. That's just Google being Google, doing mass testing with their software as, as always. Absolutely, absolutely. Others as well. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask your questions right now. Also, uh, uh, you know, we'll be helping you out in the community as well, so you can after the session also interact with everyone there. Yeah. So it's not just limited to this workshop. When we're taking this forward. Uh, I'm sure you guys have created some community and just build that community. Just bring it to life and experiment a lot. Experiment as much as you can. It will be really helpful for you. It will be really useful when you actually try to build a career out of it. So, so I think I, we can uh, wrap the session up now. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, I am glad that you guys really liked the session and. Thank you, Priyal. I am Priyal. Priyal is a thank you. dot com generations and uh, for having me here for giving incubate in this platform to share our knowledge with us. We uh, I was really happy to interact with you all, and I'm glad that you all liked it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tanisha, for taking out time from your schedule and you know doing this uh, session for all of our community members. And we wish all of you guys who are in the hackathon right now participating. So all the best to you guys as well. You'll be having your mid reviews in the evening today. The timeline has already been shared. And once again, thank you so much, Tanisha, for your time. And this has been really, really, you know, awesome as well as informational because there were some, uh, you know, concepts that I wasn't, I wasn't even clear about before I joined this session with you. So that was really great. And also, Spark AI Studio it looks very interesting. And myself, I'm gonna yeah. try it very soon. I haven't till now, so I'll be doing that. So yeah, thank you so much for joining in, and others as well. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see You're you guys welcome. next time. Yeah, and all the best to you guys for your hackathon. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you.